Biodiversity is considered key to ensuring forest landscape restoration targets are met globally, but how do we ensure these projects have the diverse genetic resources they need to do so? To discuss just that, I'm joined by Somit Saha and Santiago Gonzalez Martinez. Well, first of all, welcome and thank you very much indeed for taking the time to talk to us today. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So we're talking about uh, genetic diversity. So the first question, quite simple. What do you mean by genetic diversity and why is it important to forest uh, restoration? Well, we, we like to talk uh, of diversity uh, in a more wider term and that goes from variation in genes to variation in ecosystems. So, and, uh, and that's fundamental for resilience of forests because uh, we have evidence that more diverse systems, they uh, do better uh, when there is any kind of impact or it, and recover better and even they are more productive. Yeah, I think um, as climate is changing and we need to increase the resilience of the forest, the genetic diversity is key. Uh, for us. You know, genetic diversity resembles the overall organismic diversity, functional diversity. So as a silviculturist, our goal is to create a future forest with more tolerance to stress and research on genetic diversity and linking to forest management actually delivers that. In today's world, everybody struggles to get resources. There's never enough resources to go around. So how big a challenge is it for you to get the right resources? So I think a very big challenge is uh, that we need to um, plant millions of hectares of forest and we need seedlings and saplings and the question is where from they will come from. Um, we are seeing that there is a decline in nurseries around the world. So our challenge is to ensure enough amount of planting materials with high quality of genetic diversity and, and specific tolerance like drought tolerance. So, I think for forest restoration, the biggest problem is the plant resource itself. So I think our research and education should focus on that, that we don't forget our quality of creating good nurseries, for example. Yeah. A lot of these projects that we're talking about are, are you know, big scale projects. It sounds quite technical sometimes when you're talking about uh, biodiversity. How easy is it for you to get your message across when there might be focus on lots of different areas? Well, I, th I think we have good experience, for instance, like in some uh, European projects, like of forest, what we are doing is to develop participatory approaches, right. where we integrate uh, stakeholders from the very beginning, so local stakeholders, and then we, uh, we construct our research program based on this uh, feedback. And then once we do the research, we, uh, we, we communicate back and the resource to them, so the, at the end is the, the people that will implement whatever solution may find to, to actual problems. So. I also agree, I think the involving stakeholders from the very beginning of forest landscape restoration is key yeah. to ensure genetic diversity. So you see that nearly perhaps in Europe, for example, one third of forest perhaps is owned by private people. And sometimes we see that there is a lack of knowledge uh, how to implement there. So I think when we involve all stakeholders, uh, private owners and state owners, that, that is very important. So my final question is, how important do you think moving forward genetic diversity is for forest resilience? Yeah, I think the resilience of forest is a capacity of forest ecosystem to fight back climate change. On that perspective, we need to create a future forest which are more tolerant to drought and other stresses. And genetic diversity exactly guarantee that our knowledge on many species, for example, in Germany, we have 75 tree species, and out of that, only 10 or 15 are properly researched. So our, my main message is we need to do more research and implementation, linkage with praxis, and a proper connection between genetic research and silviculture. So the overall message that it should increase the resilience, that means a future forest with more diversity, not only organismic diversity, but also more genetic diversity, like tolerance diversity. I fully agree. I think it will become uh, more and more important uh, once we start feeling a stronger effects of climate change, and then we will need to, to adapt by a very straightforward and, uh, I would say, a simple way, actually, to do that would be by choosing the, the right genetic materials, not for today's needs, but for the future. Thank you both so much indeed for joining us. Really fascinating discussion, so thank you. Thank you for thank having you us. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you.